Hello. Hi, class. You remember me, don't you, from yesterday's lesson? I am the kangaroo with dandruff, and I don't care that much. I don't care much. Ooh. Meet Joey. Okay, today, class, what we're going to do is we are going to do a little converting in the metric system. All right, so what we're going to be giving you today are two pieces of colored paper. First piece of paper is going to be your friend, okay? This is a gold piece of paper, and you're going to make a chart out of it that is going to help you to convert between one um, SI or metric unit to another. Okay, the other thing that you're going to need to have handy is this lavender piece of paper. Okay, This is where we're going to work out some of the problems together so that you know exactly how to change uh, one metric unit into another metric unit. So let me show you how this is done. Okay, first thing we need to do in class is we need to fill out our metric chart. Um, if you remember from the other day, um, during our lesson, we talked about kangaroos and having dandruff and they don't care much so we need to so, so, silly we need to fill out our metric chart okay using the metric prefixes okay remember kangaroos the metric prefix that that kangaroo stands for is I think I heard you say it kilo kilo okay if you remember what the symbol was, it was a small K. Okay, so all we're doing together on that gold sheet of paper is we are filling out our little metric chart right up here. Okay? So you've got those uh, column headings as well, so we'll do this as we, or we'll do this together. Okay, the next metric prefix, you remember, is hecto. Okay, remember kangaroos have kilo hecto. Okay, our next prefix is deca. D E C A. And if you remember, all right, that stands for dandruff. So our symbol for deca is D A. Dandruff starts with D A. Don't forget that. All right, right in the middle of our chart is going to be the base units. Okay, and our base units um, for mass, for length, and for volume are grams, liters, and liters. So far, so good? All right, going to the other side of the chart. We're going to, to uh, be using the prefixes that are smaller than one base unit, smaller than one gram, one meter, or one liter. Okay, the next one is deci, and that's just a little d as a symbol. Then we have centi, small c for our symbol. And then finally, way over here at the right-hand side of the chart is our milli prefix, which is just a small m, okay? So remember, our saying is, kangaroos have dandruff, but don't care much, okay? That's an easy way to set up your chart when you need to convert from one SI unit to another, one metric unit to another, okay? Kangaroos have dandruff, but for the base unit, don't care much. Okay, are you guys ready? Because we are going to do some really good practice here together. All right, let me pick a color. I'm going to pick my favorite color, blue. Okay, we're going to start by, uh, let's, do, let's do what's in bold here. Okay, so number one on your worksheet, you need to... Take a look at that. Okay, number one says 35 ml. What does ml stand for? Do you know? Are you thinking about an answer right now? Okay, ml stands for 
milliliters. Okay, so milli is the prefix and liters is the base unit. Okay, milli is the prefix column that we want to start in. Okay, what I want to know is we've got 35 milliliters here. And I want to change milliliters, 35 milliliters, into DL. Now, if you're really good with these metric prefixes, okay, what would DL stand for? Did you say deca? You would not be right, okay? Because remember, deca is DA. That would be DAL. Okay, no, it's deci. Deci liters is DL. All right, so we actually want to change and go to that prefix column. Okay, so here's how we need to, to start off. Okay, we know that our measurement right now is in milliliters. Okay, milli is the prefix. I want to start all the way over there on that side of my chart in the milli column. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put my, down my measurement, okay, my number, my value, which is 35. Okay, 35 milliliters. And I want to find out the equivalent of 35 milliliters in deciliters, which is two columns away. All right? So here's what I need to do. I need to ask myself, where's the decimal point in the number 35? Are you thinking I'm crazy? I bet you are. All right? Believe it or not, it's there. Okay? Where would it be if we can't see it? Where would it be? You are correct. It is right here. Okay, when we don't see the decimal point, that decimal point is going to be at the end of the number. Okay, we don't actually have to write it in. We don't have to show it. Okay, if it's a whole number, which 35 is. But I'm going to put it in because it's going to help me solve this problem. All right, so if you don't see the decimal point in your number, it's always going to be at the end and you need to add it. Okay. So you're adding your decimal, and we need to find out what 35 milliliters is in deciliters. So I am interested in getting to this column. How many lines do I have to cross in order to get to the deciliter column? You are correct if you said two. Exactly. I've got to cross this line, and I've got to cross this line to get to this column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my decimal point and I'm going to drag it two spots in the direction that I want to go. Here's the first dot. I mean, here's, here's where the decimal point is right now. I'm going to drag it one spot. That's for my one line I have to cross. Then I'm going to drag it to the very next spot. That's the second line I have to cross. Okay? And I am moving my decimal in the same direction that I want to go in my chart, right? So my answer now is going to be 0.35 deciliters. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my, my answer blank down here. 0.35 deciliters. Okay? So basically what this is saying is 35 milliliters is equal to 0.35 deciliters. Okay, they are equal to each other. That's what that's saying. Right? I know you want to try another one. Hello, class. I'm back to do another problem with you. All right, we are going to pick uh, problem number two. Okay, on your purple sheet so you can follow along with me and put your answer in at the end and um, you know maybe you'll beat me to the answer who knows all right um, so here is here's what what our measurement is in now 950 G okay look up in our chart where in our chart do you think I'm gonna put this number to start G where do you see a G up there what yeah, 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 you're right, okay? Right in the base unit, exactly. We see the G up here, and G stands for grams. So I'm going to give myself a little room here. Okay, that was our last example. 
So I am going to take the number 950 and I'm going to put it in the middle column of my chart. 950, okay, grams. I'm going to leave the G out, okay, because it's already up in my column heading, so I don't need to worry about it in, this, in the body of my chart. All right, now, if you remember from our last example, where is the decimal point in this number? I don't know if I can hear you. Where's the decimal point? We don't see it, so automatically where are we going to put it? Right. Exactly. Right back here. Okay. If we don't see it, we always put it at the end of our number. All right. Now, we're interested in finding out um, what 950G, or grams, is in kilograms. Okay. The first part of this symbol, kilo, tells us what prefix column we're going to need to go to. I dropped my child. Hang on. <laughs> So we need to somehow get over here to the left-hand side of our chart, okay? So I need to go in this direction, and I need to figure out how many lines I need to cross to get to this column, kilograms, okay? I'm going to need to cross one, two, three lines to get to that column, all right? So now... I know what direction I'm going to want to move my decimal point, okay, and I know how many places or spots I'm going to move my decimal point, okay. I'm going to move it three times to the left. So here we go. One, two, three, and before I even lift my pen up, I'm going to put that decimal nice and big in its new home right before the nine now, okay? Now, I'm gonna come over here and put my answer in, just as I've written it, 0.950, okay? So now I can fill in my answer blank, 0 0.950 kilograms, okay? So this is saying 950 grams is equal to 0.950 kilograms. These two numbers are equal. Okay, they're just in different metric units. Mrs. Kangaroo? Yes. Do you need to have the zero at the end of the 0 0.950? That is a really, really good question. Okay, what do you guys think? Do we need the zero here really? Couldn't we just put 0.95 and would we still have the same answer? What do you guys think? <laughs> yes, that's right. You don't necessarily have to put the zero in. But since we're practicing and this is new to you, keep the zero in for now. All right, if you, you know, if you feel comfortable leaving it out, okay. But for the first couple of days that we do this, it might be a good idea to leave it in, okay? All right, um, we have one more example to do before you guys will try the rest of them on your own. So we're going to do, let's see, let's do number 10 together. Okay, so we've done question 1, 2, and 10, and the rest of them are going to be for you to do uh, as practice. Okay, so we're doing number 10 here. Think to yourself, 15G, where are we going to start in our chart? Well, I can hear you. Did you say the base again? I think you're correct. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a new row for myself, and I'm going to put 15 into the center column again, okay, because we're at the base unit, okay, and that's grand. So I want to get rid of that dot because we don't want to think that's a decimal point, um, because you know now, since we've done several examples, where the decimal point is in a whole number. If we don't see that decimal, where do we put it? That's right, we put it to the right hand side or at the end. So we put our decimal in nice and big. That's really, really important to, to, to do that step. Okay, now we need to change 15 grams into mg. What does mg stand for? 
Mrs. Frankman, can you tell us what MG might stand for? Milligrams! Milligrams, exactly, milli. All right, so we are looking for the <coughs> prefix milli, which is all the way over there at the right-hand side of our chart. All right, so now we're going in a different direction, aren't we? We want to go to the other side of our chart. We want to go to the right. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw our arrow in the opposite direction that we've been doing all along. Okay, we need to go to the milli column. This is where I'm interested in getting to. And then I am going to cross one, two, three lines to get there. Okay, so I know I need to move my decimal point to the right and I know I have to move it three times, okay, to the right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have no numbers. We have no numbers for our decimal point to jump under. What do we do? Make a bucket. What would you do? I make a bucket. I think you're right. I make okay, three I buckets. I would make three buckets. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is take our decimal point and we're going to pretend that there's numbers to jump under, okay? And that's going to create a little bucket, okay, or something very important. Here we go. We're going to do our three jumps to the right. One, One two, two, three. three. And we're going to put our decimal in nice and big again. Okay, what do, so we don't forget about it. What do we fill the bucket with? What are we going to fill our buckets with? Right! Zeros! Big, exactly! Big fat zeros. Big fat zeros. Okay, so now my answer goes over here, 15,000. And I'm going to put my decimal point where it belongs. I don't necessarily have to, all right, but I want to make sure... Um, know that I, I show the movement of that decimal from here to the back, okay? So my answer now to this problem is 15,000 kilograms. If I want to, I can put my comma in, okay? I can put my decimal at the end, but I know some of you are probably saying to yourself, I really don't need that decimal, okay? You probably don't, um, but let's put it in just for today. Okay, so 15 grams is equal to 15,000 milligrams, because milligrams are really, really tiny, and it takes 15,000 of them to make up 15 grams. Okay, they're equal. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a nice visual strategy, okay, for a lot of you to use. Okay, so what your job is over the next couple of days, okay, until m Monday's class, um, is to finish up all the remaining problems. Okay, you can use the rest of this side of the chart, or you can flip the paper over and use that side of the chart as well. If you have to, right, make another chart. Okay, it's fine. You know exactly what the order of the prefixes are, so you can make that chart at any time. You don't need us to give you a piece of paper to do that. All right, so you just need to remember that kang kangaroos have dandruff, but don't, don't care, care much. much. Da, 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 da.